Let's talk about what happens when objects collide. In all types of collisions, energy is conserved and momentum is conserved. The momentum of an object, p, is its mass times its velocity. There are four types of collisions, elastic collisions, inelastic collisions, totally inelastic collisions, and explosions. In elastic collisions, objects don't stick together, so kinetic energy is conserved. An example of an elastic collision is a Newton's cradle. For elastic collisions, conservation of momentum means that the total momentum of the objects before the collision equals their total momentum after the collision. In inelastic collisions, objects stick together for a little before separating, so some kinetic energy is dissipated, that is, lost to other forms of energy, like heat. Most real-life collisions are inelastic. In totally inelastic collisions, also known as perfectly or completely inelastic collisions, Objects stick together entirely, essentially becoming one object. As a result, kinetic energy is dissipated. This is the type of inelastic collision that will appear on the AP exam. The conservation of momentum equation for totally inelastic collisions is the same as the one for elastic collisions, except for the final momentum. Since the objects can be treated as one object after the collision, their masses can be added together, and since they stick together, they will have the same final velocity. We'll apply this equation specifically to a 2D collision problem and a ballistic pendulum problem. In explosions, also known as recoil, chemical energy is converted into kinetic energy, launching particles outward in many directions, as in a bomb. These can be thought of as uncollisions. In explosions, the initial and final momentum both equal zero. Finally, let's talk about impulse, which is related to momentum. As we know from Newton's second law, when an external force acts on an object, it causes an acceleration or a change in velocity. Since momentum involves velocity, this means that the force also causes a change in momentum, also known as an impulse. So impulse equals change in momentum, or final momentum minus initial momentum. Impulse also equals the force times the duration of time during which the force acted. You can also find impulse by integrating force with respect to time, if you're given a graph. Car 1, mass 2,500 kg, is driving south at 20 meters per second. Car 2, mass 1,450 kg, is driving east at 30 meters per second. The cars collide and become entangled, moving as one object in a southeasternish direction. Calculate the magnitude and direction of the velocity of the two cars after the collision. So this is the momentum vector for car 1. And this is the momentum vector for car 2. The final momentum vector can be found by adding the two vectors in a head-to-tail fashion, like so. So the final momentum vector has these components. You can use the Pythagorean theorem to find the magnitude of the final momentum. And we know momentum is mass times velocity, so the final momentum is the total mass times the final velocity. Solving for the final velocity, we get that the magnitude of the final velocity is 16.778 meters per second. To find the direction of the final velocity, we just need to find the direction of the final momentum, since momentum is mass times velocity, and only velocity, which is a vector, influences direction. To find the direction, you can use trigonometry. The tangent of this angle is the opposite side, or the vertical component, over the adjacent side, or the horizontal component. So the angle is the inverse tangent of negative 50,000 over 43,500, which is negative 48.977 degrees. To get the positive angle, we can just add 360 degrees. So we get that the direction of the final momentum, and therefore the final velocity, is 311.023 degrees. You can also subtract 270 from this to express the direction as a bearing. That is, south 41.023 degrees east.
In a ballistic pendulum, a 10 gram bullet traveling at 869 meters per second strikes and becomes embedded in a block of mass 2.99 kilograms. Calculate the height in centimeters that the block rises to. To solve this, we'll use conservation of momentum to find the velocity of the bullet and block after the collision, and then use conservation of mechanical energy to figure out the height the block rises to. According to conservation of momentum, the momentum of the system before the collision, that is at point A, equals the momentum after the collision, that is at point B. The momentum before the collision includes the momentum of the bullet and the momentum of the block. The block is at rest, so this is zero. After the collision, the bullet becomes embedded in the block, so the bullet and block can be treated as one object. From now on, I'll just call this object the block. The block's momentum is its total mass times its velocity right after the collision. Plugging in and solving, we get that the velocity right after the collision is 2.897 meters per second. According to conservation of mechanical energy, the total mechanical energy of the block at the bottom of its path, that is, at point B, equals the total mechanical energy at the top of its path, that is, at point C. This includes potential and kinetic energy. At the bottom of the path, the potential energy is zero, since the height is zero, and at the top of the path, the kinetic energy is zero, since the velocity is zero. So the kinetic energy at the bottom equals the potential energy at the top. We can replace the potential energy with 1 half mv squared and the potential energy with mgh. m here represents the total mass of the bullet and block, which is 3 kilograms, but here it cancels out, so it doesn't matter. Solving for h, we get that the height is vf squared over 2g, which is 0.4196 meters. The problem asks for the answer in centimeters, so converting gives us that the answer to this problem, as is the answer to life, the universe, and everything, is 42.